Hi, I'm Bill. Um, today what we're going to do is uh, we're going to make a little jig for our uh, horizontal bandsaw here. Um, this will swivel and we'll kind of go around it in a second and I'll show you that. But it only swivels out to 45 degrees, which is uh, fine for just uh, a lot of things, uh, making squares and miters. Uh, typically your, your building to a 90 degree angle, so 45 is fine. But um, we have, actually have a need to, to make a lot steeper cut on a regular basis, um, maybe up to uh, 30 degrees or, or 60 degrees um, on, on the uh, vertical. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to make a little jig for this uh, horizontal bandsaw. And um, that's going to allow us to get that extra angle um, on the cut and uh, make the stuff a lot easier for us to pull. Okay, um, here's just the lock for our machine. Um, there's actually one in the back. We usually don't use that. We're, we're not cutting real heavy stuff here. Um, we have this up, we can swing the head over to 45, and then that's basically it. So the jig is going to go in, in between the uh, movable jaw and the fixed jaw here, and it's going to look like a little triangle. It's going to kick that material out, that extra amount that we need to, to get a steeper cut than 45. Okay, here's the angle gauge on the horizontal bandsaw, and you can see we're going to set it to about 45. And what we're going to do is we're going to lay some stock in there and see what kind of space we have to play with. Uh, one thing that uh, pops out here is um, look how far the uh, movable jaw is on the vise from the blade. Um, that's going to pose a bit of a problem for us later on, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that later. Okay, so we're going to put a piece in there and we've got an angle of uh, 60 degrees laid out on the piece. And we're going to lower that blade down and we're going to align it by eye. And we're just going to see uh, what kind of space we have um, with the piece in that orientation. And that's where we're going to put our jig. So that, that's what we have to work with, that, that little triangle area there. Okay, so we're going to do a little sketch of uh, the jig of our idea. And we, we pulled some dimensions from the, the saw, and we're going to put those on there, and we're just going to kind of lay it out and see, uh, see what we come up with. So what we're going to do is we're going to set an angle of 20 degrees, and that's going to give us some leeway. Um, we only need 15 uh, to make up that 60 degree angle, but by having 20, um, it's going to allow us to, to correct if we make a little mistake on the jig. So that's basically what the jig's going to look like there on the left. There's going to have three members on it and one big long member to support the stock. So we'll just draw out some triangles and figure out what the dimensions are. And um, I, I chose to do it this way by, by doing the triangles and stuff. Um, you could do a full scale drawing and then just scale it off the drawing if you didn't want to do that. Um, but I, that's how I chose to do it. Uh, based on that information, uh, we're able to figure out that uh, one of the pieces is about 4.4 .4 inches. And so the other piece is, uh, the short piece is about 1.5 inches. So now we're going to go ahead and do that layout on the 4.4 .4 inch piece. Uh, we're going to go to the center line. Uh, we're going to look up what, to what 0.4 is, our decimal equivalent of that. Um, ended up being about 7 sixteenths, I believe. We're going to go ahead and locate our center line, and then we're going to put our protractor head on the uh, blade and go ahead and lay out that cut line so we can take it over to the saw and make that cut. Okay, so we're at the saw now. We're going to put our stock in there and uh, go ahead and line it up. So we're going to just set the saw by the um, gauge on, the, on it and set it to 20 degrees. And then we're going to see how that relates to our line. And then we're going to dial it in and get that as close as we can. Now, we don't have to be uh, decimal perfect on this one. Um, this is going to get welded up. So as long as we're, we're pretty close, we should be all right. And because we're making the jig a little bit bigger, then what we need, we should be able to correct for any mistake uh, later when we uh, go ahead and put our part in to cut. So we'll go ahead and make our first cut, and then we're going to go take that part back to the bench and uh, check it for uh, accuracy and make sure that um, we're, we're pretty close to that angle of 20 degrees that we need um, for the uh, piece. And we're going to use that long piece there, the 4.4, that'll be the one member, and then the cut off the other p long piece of material that's still in the saw, we're going to use that, make a 90 degree cut for our shorter piece. Okay, so we got our piece and we're going to just clean it up a little bit with a file. Uh, that saw does a pretty good job, it doesn't leave a real big burr on it, but we want to get rid of uh, whatever's there uh, to make our measurements a little more accurate. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to take our protractor head and inject it, and it was pretty close. Um, so now we're going to clean up the other side because we're going to use that as well. And we're going to pull a measurement off that to uh, cut the next shortest piece. And uh, this one's a little bit tricky. That, ang that angle prevents you from making a real clean measurement on the center line. But the piece is so short that um, I don't think it's going to matter too much for that. So we just went ahead and just plumbed it up by eye. Okay, we've got the part in the machine now. We're going to get ready to tack it up. And we just got them sitting in there. And there's a little magnet on the end to hold them. We're grounded directly to the part. That last little piece I'm just going to hold with one hand and get a little tack on the other. And we're going to take it over to the welding table. Okay, so now we've got it on our welding table. We're going to put some tacks on it. Uh, we're using a, a MIG welder here. Um, and we're just going to tack it wherever we can on this top bit. And then once we uh, let it cool off a bit, we're going to go ahead and flip it over and tack it on the other side. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting a couple tacks on each joint um, just to kind of uh, solidify it a little bit. Um, wherever I can get the gun in there on, on this top side, we're going to go ahead and do that. And then um, we'll, we'll go ahead and do the other side. Okay, so now it's cooled and we're going to go ahead and pop this uh, clamps off and uh, put the shims underneath it. Um, I'm just going to flip it around and the shims, we're just going to space out the uh, tack so we're still sitting flat on the table and we're not sitting on a tack uh, somewhere on the part and, and making us not flat. Once we do that, uh, we're going to clamp it back down again and then we'll go ahead and tack it up on the other side. Okay, so we've got the clamps in position. We're using our uh, straight edge and we're checking each joint to make sure that uh, we're going to clamp it back down flat. Um, now when we put those tacks on the other side, those are going to shrink a little bit and kind of pull the joint apart. So we've got to kind of go in and make sure that we can clamp it back down and get, get it flat uh, like we want it. And once we get it flat and check each joint, well, we're going to go ahead and um, run some beads after we tack the rest up. Okay, so we're tacking up now on the other side. Everything's good and flat. Um, once we've uh, got this side tacked up, we're going to be ready to run some uh, weld beads on it. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to tack uh, the whole part up on this side. where it's, um, And then once it's uh, tacked up, we're going to go ahead and let it cool off a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and start running some beads on it um, on this side. We'll let that cool off again. We'll flip it, weld the other side, and uh, we'll be in good shape. So here we are, we're getting ready to weld. Um, we'll go ahead and fire up uh, on this one seam and then just kind of move across the part and uh, go ahead and um, put some welds on this. Now we're not going to kill this thing with the welder. Um, it's pretty heavy material and we got the machine set um, a little bit cold, but uh, it's going to be fine for what this is for. This is, uh, this is not going to see a lot of load. It's pretty heavy material. Um, it, it's going to be in a vise in the machine and, and support it and stuff. So uh, we'll, we don't want to put a lot of heat in this thing and, and warp it. So we're, we're going to keep it kind of low and, and just do some stringer beads on this thing. And uh, uh, again, we're not going to bevel any of the edges or anything like that. We just have the gaps that um, are there from the, the round on the material. And we're just going to go ahead and run some beads on this part. And uh, it should be fine for what it's going to be for. So we're just finishing up the, the last uh, bit of welding on this side. And then again, we're going to let it cool. We're going to flip it around and do the same thing with the shims. Uh, this time, we got to make sure that we're, we're shimmed up above our weld. And um, uh, that way, we're going to ensure that the part is nice and flat 
when we go ahead and weld this other side. So now we're flipping it over and uh, we're going to rearrange those shims, get them to where they're supporting the part nice and even, and clamp it back up and uh, go ahead and, and weld up this other side. And then once that's done, we're going to flip the part one more time and just get some welds in those corners. Um, and then uh, we'll, we'll be good uh, to go on the welding on this thing. So the table makes it go fast. Um, the clamps uh, work really well. Um, they do get in the way a little bit. You got to kind of watch out where you put them. Um, they they can tend to block things and stuff with uh, the riser and the handle and all that. So you got to make sure that you got room. So here's uh, here's one of the welds. Uh, we put a, put a shade on the, the camera and went ahead and did that um, just just to try and see what we could get. And uh, <laughs> uh, we need to do a little work on these, but uh, you can kind of get the idea of what, what we're doing. Just a real quick stringer bead on these uh, uh, butt joints here, and just filling up that uh, gap with a, a weld again. We're not going to over weld this thing. Uh, we just want to keep it together and uh, keep it nice and flat. So here's another one that we uh, did. Um, this guy is clamped down pretty tight, and uh, we're just going to run a little bead across it and uh, go ahead and let that cool off. Okay, so now we've got the, that side done. We're going to go ahead and take it out, and we're going to flip it upright so we can get at those corners a little easier. Uh, we don't need the shims anymore. That uh, We can go ahead and line that uh, one weld seam up on the gap on the table, and the rest is pretty flat um, from the material. There's no welds on that side. So we're going to go ahead and uh, tighten everything up, make sure uh, everything's good and flat and locked in, and then um, we just spray a little table uh, with a little bit of anti-splatter spray. Again, just kind of make sure we don't get uh, dingleberries on the table. And we're going to go ahead and run these corners. And again, we're just doing a real quick bead on them. Um, just kind of tie this thing together. And then that'll be it for the welding on this uh, jig. Once we get this done, we'll let it cool off and we'll go see how it fits in the uh, machine. So again, those, uh, the table works real good. It to kind of hold stuff nice and flat while you weld it. Um, the, those clamps, uh, they can get in the way though and can kind of make it a little bit awkward, but uh, for the most part they work out real good. Um, you just got to plan ahead a little bit where they're at and if you need to move them around, uh, you need to do that and um, keep your part nice and flat and clamp down tight. Okay, parts cooled off. We're going to grind that one side uh, just so it sits nice and flat on the table. Um, again, the welds aren't that heavy, so it shouldn't take us too long. We're just going to hit it with a hard disc and then a flap wheel and kind of blend it a little bit and uh, make sure we don't have any sharp edges on it. And then we should be ready to test fit it in the machine and make sure it fits uh, how we uh, anticipated. So we're just going to go ahead and finish up that grinding. Hit it with the flat wheel, check it on the table, make sure it's uh, it's pretty flat, and it is. So we're going to go over the machine. All right, so we're over at the machine, and uh, jig fits good, but uh, we have run into a little problem about that vise, and it's it wants to turn the jig out of the uh, of, uh, off that fixed jaw. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some holes in there, and uh, we'll run a bolt through and, and make a little holder that drops through that slot in the table and kind of capture it that way. Um, we could have notched that back member and uh, done it that way, but I think we're just going to go ahead and punch a hole in this thing and uh, go ahead and run a bolt through it. So we're going to get set up on the drill press to knock that hole out and uh, run it through on the, in the center member there. Um, we've got plenty of material uh, for strength and stuff, uh, so I'm not worried at all about that. And um, go ahead and punch a hole in this one and then uh, put a bolt through, and we'll make it uh, a little cap, uh, keeper go in that slot and then that should lock it in. So we're going to build those parts in the second part of the, of the video for this jig. Um, it should be uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. We're just going to make some flat bar material and put a tap hole in it and then we'll uh, go ahead and make some parts with the jig and, and see uh, what kind of repeatability we get. So uh, that'll be in part two. Thanks.